Africa. We are deep, deep, deep in an Africa where the winds of change have so far made scarcely a surface ripple. Africa, Africa as nine-tenths or more of it still is. A 12-year-old girl does the dance that initiates her into womanhood. We are amongst the Shangan tribe at a medicine man's crawl deep in the bush in lion country. It's taken us less than 24 hours to get here from Britain to a jungle that couldn't be changed if the attempt was made in the rest of this century. We ourselves are living in rondavels that look just like these ones. Tourists are flying in, as we've done, to the most luxurious game reserve in existence, deep in the bush and disguised as a native village. Your plane has to buzz the camp, as it's called, and the airstrip to alert a reception party and to drive off the herds that are grazing where you'll be touching down. deep in the bush felt now on the last leg of your journey from Mozambique, Durban or Johannesburg. But don't imagine that you'll be roughing it. Here in the jungle that can't be tamed, you are landing at a place that is an enclave of millionaire magic. You can consider yourself among the elite. Only 22 guests at a time are ever accommodated at the luxury hotel they've managed to build deep in wildest Africa. You'll be here in all likelihood for just two unforgettable days, collecting spectacular memories from Malamala, the only African village with a cool, filtered swimming pool and elegant thatched umbrellas outside rondavels that are air-conditioned and, to say the least, lush. Can this really be the bush, where white rhinos roam free? Could there be anything as prehistoric as a giraffe in its natural element outside? Ingwa, the tame cheetah, has relatives in the nearby bush who are really wild, because this civilized oasis is an illusion. That buffalo has fierce sons and daughters at liberty just outside, as you see from your open Land Rover. You've got game rangers here who know the whole 22,000 acres they scour and can penetrate the jungle animal's natural camouflage and take us in among a herd of giraffe. These creatures can stand still and look like nothing more than tall trees. Their camouflage is half the reason they're alive. The exciting thing in an open truck is expectancy. What will we see next? We're out of our ordered world where nature in the raw does just what it likes. So suddenly we're confronted by elephant. Elephants walk here often as not from Kenya, uprooting trees to nibble a branch, breaking through the stoutest wire fences they encounter as if they were tangleweed. The African elephant that's never been tamed is more menacing than even the lion. The elephant, like the giraffe, has a prehistoric look about it, as so many creatures of the African bush do. Like the unchanging African bush itself, certainly like these ostriches. They're the biggest birds on earth, and they can't fly. They owe their survival to the fact that they can run faster than any antelope. They're normally shy, but here at Mala Mala, they accept the Land Rover as part of the local scenery. Not far away, there are animals who would charge us and overturn our vehicles. The white rhinos, if they guessed we were here. But we are safe. We are downwind from them, so they can't smell us, and their eyesight is rudimentary. But they protect that calf with all their brute strength, almost as if they sensed that their species is in danger of dying out. If this is the land of that rare creature, the white rhino, remember, it is lion country too. Though in the luxury of Mala Mala, you don't have to go looking for lions. The lion comes obligingly to the treehouse. Oh yes, they close the gate, but that's just to heighten the drama. Our camera team, you will notice, stays outside. 
as the rest of the guests go up for a treetop view. The game warden, who's out in the open with us, assures us that the lion will take no notice of us if wildebeest is on the menu. Just keep quiet, he says, and see how it feels to be in the bush just ten paces away from hungry, healthy, four-year-old lions in their prime. It's curiously frightening, in spite of the game warden's assurance. Up in the treehouse, it's less of an intrusion, safe or otherwise, on jungle life. Just as you're noticing how well the lion's coat can camouflage it in the dry bush grass, you scent a smell of burning. Somewhere, this bush grass is on fire. Yes, there's a bush fire, and it will take every man there is to get it under control. A fire like this only spreads if there's something ahead of it to burn, so in the bush belt, you fight fire with fire. You go well downwind of it and you start a controlled fire of your own to produce a fire break, a burnt out area that the wind fanned flames can't reach across. You make your fire break way ahead of the blaze so there's plenty of time to beat it out. It's all part of a jungle drama in technicolor hues. the fire has been halted. Now it just smoulders. This is the recurring hazard that tells you as much as you'll ever know about life in the African bush. 